Good morning. Good morning. There's some uh, face slapping going on on this end. I was trying to be awake. It's not really working. How was your weekend? My weekend was as good as your weekend. No, your weekend was better than my well, weekend. Yeah, I watched that and watched football. I watched a lot of football this weekend. There's I typed no up my notes from uh, the books that I read for the R and R Journey page. So I spent all day yesterday in front of the computer typing notes and arguing with somebody about soda on Facebook, which was a completely yeah. ridiculous conversation. <laughs> slapping your phone. You did it again. I'm like, wait a second, how did we catch you slapping your face? You're very strange. I oh, am. Yeah. Russ made bread this weekend. Raisin bread. He did. That's it's, awesome. It, and it rose, and it's really pretty. So I'll, I'll post some pictures of that mm. um, pretty soon. Yeah. How was your workout? I had a good workout. Uh, today was chest, biceps, forearms, and I got three sets of calves. In. I can't say calves because calves are more than three sets, but I stuck in three sets, so that's good. Okay. You know, I wondered. Like it took you a long time. Well, I was watching you, and every time I looked at you, you're up on your bike going... Yeah. So I'm like, I guess he's not done yet. I'll keep going. I rode a long time today. I really? rode, I rode 12 miles, and I'm not in really great cardio shape right now. So, uh, 12 miles took me about 70 minutes, which yeah. is a pretty sad state of <laughs> affairs. But that's all right. I rode. I was pretty happy about it. Yeah. Was it a so, race? No, it wasn't. So that's good. <coughs> so last week um, we were um, on, and we were asked the question about calcium and if calcium needs to be supplemented in a whole food plant-based diet. And I told, I said at the time that the answer was no, because I know I've read um, a lot about it, but I didn't have the specifics. So I wanted to circle back to that and give some specifics on it. And I will post um, a link in the comments when we get done. Um, I found an article on the Forks Over Knives site, which I consider a very um, valued source when it comes to whole food plant-based because they actually pro they provide references to the science. They don't just tell you, here's the, the, here's the facts. Yeah. They give you references to the science. So you can go and actually read the articles um, yourself. So I will post that. But um, I'll, I'll give you the highlights so in case you don't have time to read the article. Um, the first thing that they point out is that a diet that's high in animal products creates a higher excretion rate of calcium because your body uses calcium to eliminate uh, the sodium and to process um, high protein. And so if you're excreting more calcium, obviously your intake also needs to be higher. Right. Right. So that, that's an interesting, so when you, when you look at, if you just Google like how much calcium do I need, it's going to assume that you're eating the standard American diet and it's gonna right. give you a number based on that excretion rate, which is not, if you're eating whole food plant-based, isn't correct for you. So if you're eating whole food plant-based, your need is gonna be lower because your excretion rate is lower. Right. So I thought that that was interesting. The other thing that they said that is relevant is that your sodium intake, if it's really high, um, increases um, your excretion rate. And also caffeine, which is interesting mm. because um, if you guys watch our, our my posts, on Saturday we went and got coffee for the first time in about three weeks because Russ has is, is decided that he's going to go off of coffee because right. of the acid. And even though you were drinking mostly decaf, right. and I was only drinking coffee about once a week previous, in the three weeks, I guess our bodies became used to not having caffeine. And right. on Saturday, we were both like so buzzy. Yeah, we were was, jetting around. It, it was, was not, it was just yeah. not pleasant. Right. So it's right. interesting that caffeine um, increases the rate of excretion of calcium. So if you're taking in a lot of caffeine, you're going to need to take in you know, right. higher calcium, right. um, calcium, calcium rates. The other thing that it pointed out, was, and I thought that this was interesting, is that our bodies are capable of adjusting to how much calcium we're intaking versus how much they, it excretes. And if you take in a small amount and your body needs a small amount, then that's what your intestines absorb. If you take in a whole high amount and you're excreting a high amount, your intestines will absorb more. So how much your body needs, um, your, your intestines and your kidneys adjust. So the more you need, the more you need to take in. But if you're taking in way more than you need, then your body has to flush it, and that goes through your kidneys, which was pointed out uh, last week that that can cause uh, problems with kidneys, in, including kidney stones. Kidney stones, yes. Which are not fun. No, I've experienced that. Yeah, I have a couple of times. It's not pleasant. Uh, Although I haven't had any since our diet's been you know, better. And I told you this. I, I, I talk about my father, who was a heavy smoker, ate whatever. I mean, just, Very hot. Everything about him was not healthy, yeah. but 
I mean, he had kidney stones the size of pencil erasers, oh. and he had them like once a month. And I'm like, oh my god! I mean, every other day I hear he's going to the hospital because he's got a kidney stone. I'm like, gotta change something. <laughs> I had it once, and that was God, 25 years ago. That's you know? plenty and enough. That was plenty right? enough for me. Yep. Yeah. So um, the the other thing that I wanted to to talk about a little bit is that. Yeah, don't have one, Laura. They're not fun. No, don't. Um, um, in milk, only 30% of the calcium is bi bioavailable. And what that means is that the, the calcium that's in it doesn't all get absorbed. A lot of it just passes straight through. So while people say milk is high in calcium, if it's not bioavailable, it doesn't really count. If right. it's not, that's not helpful if it's not bioavailable. Um, and plants, such like broccoli, and I think it's, I wrote down broccoli, and I think it said bok choy, are as high as 50% bioavailable, and they have just as much calcium in them as as milk does. So, I thought that was interesting that the plant you calcium absorb it better. Yeah. is more bioavailable. Right. So, um, yeah, and if you have a high intake of dietary protein, and it just said dietary protein, so that is animal protein and plant protein, but not including, I assume. Um protein powders. No, any di any oh, dietary anything. protein. Okay. Right. If your body has to process protein, it's going to need higher levels of okay. calcium because it's it's washing it through. But the interesting thing about that is as we know, we've talked about this before, animal proteins are it's so much easier to take in huge high volumes of oh, yeah. protein. Whereas if you're eating plant protein, you're more likely to be at the 10% um, level that you that your body needs and it's not right. higher than that. I guess I read it to you the other day on, on my phone where I talked about um, chicken. I used chicken as an example. Okay. And a portion of chicken and it talked about how a serving of chicken for protein ratio and all that is about the size of a deck of cards. If you can imagine a deck of cards, the thickness and the width, the width and the height and all that of, of a deck of cards, about how big of a piece of chicken you should eat if you're eating animal products. Right, that's what, three and ounces it, or something? Right, three to four ounces. And it talks about the portion that we usually eat, which is like a chicken breast. Right, which, which is like is, nine ounces. Yeah, I think it was a nine times the amount that you should be consuming when you eat, when you eat animal yeah, protein. Yeah, it's an obscene amount yes. of, yeah. of protein. And so if you're eating animal products, you're going to need higher calcium because your body it, is going to be washing it through. Right. I also, and I wasn't able to find it over the weekend. I know I read and saw a chart where they charted dairy intake and hip fractures okay and they they correlate like the more dairy intake a country has the higher level of hip fractures wow. they have which you would think would not be the case no i wouldn't but it is that. directly correlated that huh. the, the more um dairy products a country intakes the higher hip fractures that they have so there's something going on there when it comes to, to calcium, calcium and osteoporosis and, right. and dairy and you know obviously milk has protein in it which uh, right. impacts calcium use and absorption so um, the short of it is, if you're eating whole food plant-based and you're eating a variety of plants right. and you know, staying away from processed foods that are mm -hmm. high in sodium and uh, caffeine, you have nothing to worry about when it comes to mm -hmm. um, calcium. Instead, there's no such thing as a calcium deficiency disease. Right, right. It's exactly what uh, Dr. McDougall said in that, in that um, talk that he gave that we watched, is that if you're eating a variety of foods, you never have to worry about getting enough nutrients of any one kind. Right, because it just happens. It just happens. And right. it happens naturally. Because you're eating enough it. variety. Right. Yeah. So um, that's what we learned. And I will, again, I'll post the article. It's from the Forks Over Knives, and it does have the um, research articles that are at the bottom. So if you want to go and read the science, it, it does have that in there. Right. And there's a lot more out there. I'm If I find the chart that charts... Um, hip fractures and, and milk consumption or dairy consumption, I will post that as well. Right. I don't remember where I saw it. I just remember seeing it, and it may be in a book that I return to the library. So. Maybe, maybe. And, and the only other thing I want to add, too, is, is the only, there is one element that you have to supplement, and that is vitamin B12. Right, and we've yeah. talked about we've that talked because about that. vitamin B12 is created by a bacteria that's in soil, and we just don't eat enough soil. Right, we just we <laughs> clean everything to a, to a uh, nausea, I guess. Nausea. Ad nauseum. Ad nauseum, yes. yes. And then vitamin D, because there's no sunshine right now, which right, is very, right. very sad. Although I was, I was filling, I, I told Robin, I was filling air in my tires, and we have a pump to do that um, Saturday or whatever, and it was sunny out, and I just stood there like this into the sun. Ah. Trying to pretend he was making vitamin D. <laughs> That's what I was saying, <laughs> vitamin D. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. <laughs> but today's a fasting day for us, obviously, because we don't have uh, any, any food on our counter here. 
you're drinking turmeric tea? Turmeric tea, yes. Yep. And I'm, I'm drinking uh, hot water. I did post an article on the r, r Journey page over the weekend about fasting and the benefits of fasting. So if you're interested in the science and why it's good for you, um, I would encourage you to pop over to the r, r Journey page and check out the article because it was a really right. good in-depth look at fasting. Right. And, and, Intermittent fasting. And, I, and I just want to say too that the folks that are, because we've gotten people comment that, well, I've gotten the 12 hours, I've gotten the 14 hours, that's about all I can do. Fantastic. Yep. Because apparently even 12 hours, that's the minimum, right? It's 12 hours, I think? 12 hours is where the, the good stuff starts happening. Right. So if you're doing 12, 14 hours, you don't have to do 24 like we tend to do. Um, it gets and it gets really good at, at 18, and it does what what it does is it puts your body into ketosis, which is a bad thing for a long term. Like it's right. really not healthy if you're doing it, like if you're eating too much protein, it, your body goes into ketosis. And I think if you're when you're diabetic, it, it, that it creates that. And I don't like I'm making that up. I've heard it, I read it, but I couldn't tell you where. Mm -hmm. So don't don't quote me on that. Right. But a little bit of it allows your body to, to take care of itself. It's actually healthy. But you have to be careful with it. Like, yeah. You know. Yes. And Don't do anything without your doctor's input. I was just going to say that. She had to just put the words right out of my mouth. As we always <laughs> say, always seek your, your doctor's advice first. But um, So thank you for the question about calcium. Um, I will post the article here. Keep when we them get coming. Done. Yeah, keep asking. If you yeah. have other questions, we'll find definitely out. let me know. I had somebody ask about um, histamines in food today. Right. So I'm going to have to do, I have, have to look into that. I know nothing about histamines in food. We'll find out. We'll find out all about it. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right. So um, that's what we've got for you for today. We'll be back tomorrow, and um, I'm sure I'll have something interesting to talk about. I don't know what it'll be, but with all the books and reading I'm doing, there's always yep. something. Yep. And my next classes start on Wednesday for my. She's very uh, excited I'm about very that. excited about right. that. So they, I finished the one I was working on early so I've been kind of waiting for the next ones to start so they start on Wednesday very cool so you're gonna tell them bye bye I'm no, just kidding <laughs> and so with that we will say eat real food not too much mostly, mostly plants. plants have a great we'll see day you tomorrow guys.